Here we go. Here we go. I've got Miss Melissa DeSantis, right? You told me yes. before we started this, I had to have that. I, I needed that eh in there to to represent New Jersey. Um, but I'm I'm really excited to to be able to talk to you today because um, I I do know um, that you have an interesting background, and uh, so I'm interested in in diving into that a, a, a little bit further, and and certainly want to hear about your EXP journey, but um, also want to hear about your journey into real estate. And um, so um, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mike. I'm excited to be here. A little nervous, but excited. Nervous means you uh, at least, uh, nervous is good for me because it means at least you cared about it, right? If you didn't yes. if you didn't give a shit about it, you probably wouldn't care. So, and you and if you didn't care, you wouldn't be nervous. So I, I, I guess I, I feel kind of good about You're that. You're flattered. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, um let Let's just kind of walk through your 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 professional journey. I mean, how did you? I always I'm always interested. I, I feel like no one ever goes to school when they're younger and and they they're thinking, you know what? I'm going to be a realtor when I grow up. Like I, I I mean, very few people have I ever talked to that 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 thought, you know, I'm just going to be a real estate agent when I grow up. It's it's we all backed into this industry um, in a different way. So I'm I'm interested to hear your story. And, and what I do know about you is that you came from the medical uh, device sales space, correct? correct? Correct. So why don't we start with that? Like, how did you how did you make that transition from the medical device sales space into um, into selling real estate? Yeah, yeah so, so I was, was I'm echoing. Are you? Yeah. All right. Now I'm okay. I was before. Okay. Now I'm okay. So yes, I, after college, I actually worked in New York City at the NFL. Um, and at the time I was on the internet team for the, with the NFL and the internet was fairly new and just doing office work. And immediately I knew I was just not a, an office type person where I could just go in and sit in an office all day. Right. So started looking for sales jobs and luckily got into medical sales. And although I liked sales, I liked being on the road. Um, I loved the fact that with sales, you know, there was no limit, you, you know, you, you there was nobody would sell you. Okay, you're going to make a hundred thousand dollars this year. It was basically up to you, and you do you determined your income. And I love that, but I was not passionate about medical sales. So during that time, I was selling my townhouse and I was buying a house, and the realtor that I was working with, I said to myself, "Oh my gosh, if she can do this." I could definitely do this and be amazing. Was she a basket she, case? She was a complete basket case, um, to say the least. I mean, she and this was, you know, back in the height of the market, two thousand and five. So, you know, it was basically you stuck a sign in the lawn and it's, and the home sold. Sure. Um, the market was crazy, but yeah, she was a bit, she she didn't know what she was doing, and I said to myself, and I I loved it. I loved the whole you know, everything about real estate. So I said to myself, okay, I'm going to go to school for real, real estate school, get my license. I'll do it part-time while I'm doing medical sales. And I did that and I started and I quickly realized if I was going to be successful, uh, this was not a part-time job. It was, you know, beyond that. It was beyond a full-time job. So I took a leap of faith and left my medical sales industry where, you know, I had a company car, an expense account, a salary, on t and plus commission, and got into real estate. And you know, it's completely night and day. But it was the best thing that I ever did. How long did you do that? How long did I do what? Medical sales. How long were you? How long did you? I was in medical sales for about four years. Okay, so you did that. You may, I mean, to 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 date, you may, and I've I've had probably close to fifty people on the show now. You may be, you may have had the best job of anybody that I know about transitioning into the industry. So that had to be for you. Um, that had to be very difficult for you to leave a job where you had you made really good money, like. From what I know about medical sales, um, at least the way it used to be, is you it was an industry that paid a really good salary. 
Um, you, like you said before, you get a company car. I mean, you, you have opportunities to go on president's club trips and that it to nice destinations. Um, t I, I want you to walk me through that real quick. Cause that, that couldn't have been something that was, uh, that couldn't have been a, a, a decision that was very easy to make. No, it definitely wasn't. Um, and the benefits I, were great with medical cells and I didn't work that many hours to be honest, but I wasn't, I wasn't passionate about it. Like I, you know, Doing it, it wasn't as if it was something that fulfilled me and real estate did. And I was passionate about it. So looking back now, um, I don't know how I actually did it because it was really, like I said, taking a leap of faith. And as soon as I got, I got into real estate full time, the market tanked. That's when the market just went. Wow, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, so the timing, you know, was was not great. But in hindsight, um, I'm thankful for it because it pushed me to do new things, learn new things, and to really learn how to be a good agent. But it was not an easy decision. And, you know, luckily, my my husband, you know, he had a steady income. So that was reassuring somewhat. But you know, the, the benefits and what you receive for medical sales and the security is much greater than what real estate, you know, initially can offer. So was he okay with your decision to move? Yeah. He said, you know, if this is something you want to do and you feel that it's, you know, what, what your, you know, your purpose is, then go ahead and try it. You That's know, I knew, you know, you can always go back. Yeah. You know, it's great to have the support of a spouse like that. And I, I can always think back to when, um, cause I was, I had a, I had, I had a, a decent job. Um, I hated it, but I, it was a decent job and it paid a, a, a good salary. And, and I was making close to six figures. And I, I, I remember that conversation when I went to my wife and I was like, you know, honey, it's, I, I need to leave this job cause it's costing me more to be here in this corporate job than it is to actually sell real estate. And I was able to transition while, um, you know, I had some listings. So it was, it was a fairly seamless transition and, you know, and, and obviously I got her blessing to do that. So for you, it's great to hear that, you know, you had that support and that, you know, also that you had, um, you had, your husband had a, a like, as you said, a pretty secure job. Right. So, you know, I, you know, you, you made the transition, um, the mark. So you get into the market, it's really good at first, right? But then it immediately tanks. So how do you handle yes. that? Um, I learned to do short sales. <laughs> like very quickly, right? Very quickly. I would say my first year, a lot of them were short sales. And I, lo I loved it. I love, I still to this day love doing short sales. I love being able to help someone and guide them, you know, that's in a difficult situation. But, you know, Short sales are also emotional. They're also a lot of work. Uh, again, it really made me, though, learn how to be, I don't want to say creative, but I guess in another mm -hmm. sense, it, it made me figure out and dig deep. Well, what am I going to do? The market's not what it was when I got my license. It's not. Uh, so you got to be resourceful and you got to figure out a way to bring to bring in income. Did you did you start to second guess your decision to get into real estate at all? You know, I, I to be honest, yes, I, I did when I first I remember that first year and saying, well, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And, you know, when the you know, when the market just all of a sudden home prices, you know, plummeted and things just weren't, you know, where 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 they were a few months ago. But luckily, I, I stuck in there and knew that if I worked hard enough and put forth the effort, you know, good things would come. Yeah, that's great. And so, like, you know, and you made it through that, by the way, and you obviously you've done extremely well. Um, and when did it when did real estate? I mean, you, you know, you're selling over 15 million dollars in real estate um, now and and you know, that's obviously really good. But when, when did you make that transition from just being kind of a, an agent who does like onesie twosies, who maybe doesn't treat it like a business um, to when did it, when did that light bulb really go off for you in your business? And when did you kind of take that next step? 
I would say it was when I joined Kinder Reese Coaching. I looked for a coach uh, to take my business to the next level. And it was around 2012. And I hired my first assistant, got into coaching with uh, Jay Kinder, Mike Reese, and learned just so much from that. And just that's, I guess, when I would say I really, that's when my business took off. How did you know to do that though? How did you know to hire a coach? How did I know to hire a coach? That's a good question. Uh, I'm not really sure how I knew. I guess I was just struggling with, you know, how do I take my business to the next level? What do I do? And not being able to get the answers from my broker or fellow agents. So I guess, you know, looking for education online and, you know, finding, I, I guess also following um, top producers, big agents in the industry and seeing they were doing real estate coaching and knowing that that was the next step. Yeah. Okay. And so, and then, so you said in 2012 that that's when it really clicked for you when you started coaching with the guys at Kinder Reese, who, who do you remember who your coach was? Was it kitchens? No, it was Wally. Wally. Okay. Yeah. That is awesome. And so, so that first year of coaching, what happened to you? I mean, obviously you, you, you were the type of person that sought work. You were constantly seeking information, right? And mm -hmm. if you couldn't get the answers. You, you, you know, you would go somewhere else. Right. And, and then eventually you thought, or the idea was presented to you that, Hey, you know, we're doing all this. We're, we're doing real estate coaching specifically for people like you, right. Who are seeking information and looking to grow their business. And then you connect with Kendra Reese and then like, I'm assuming like you started to get everything you needed and in, 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 in turn, your business really started to take off. Is that what happened? Basically, yes. And I, you know, I was a little, I wasn't the, the easiest client. A lot of things that, you know, they would tell me to do. Uh, I, I would, you know, I would have objections. Oh, I can't do that. Or I don't want to do it. Or we don't do it that way in our market. You know, um, so I was a little I wasn't the, the easiest client. I didn't really believe in the beginning. Uh, Wally was great, though. I mean, I remember Wally. He would say at 7 a.m. on Thursday, we're getting on the phone and we're calling expired. And I'm like, we can't call people around here at 7 a.m. You can't. He says, who says you can't do that? You know, so I think what what it did is it pushed me and it put me it learned and i think this is the beginning it was the beginning of stepping outside my comfort zone which i'm doing a lot these days yeah um but that was that was the beginning uh, i'm glad you said that um do you feel like i i, I feel like in my business it's it I've, I've had the biggest growth or the biggest gains in my business when i've been able to step outside of my comfort zone is that the way it's been for you I agree. Yeah. And when you're going through it, it doesn't feel that way. But when you, you know, look back and in hindsight, you see things you've accomplished or things that have come to come to be, you realize it was when you pushed yourself or when you did things that just were completely outside of your comfort zone. Right. 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 So what, what is, I mean, fast forward to today, right? You're, mm -hmm. you you'll finish the year, you'll have done uh, over $15 million in real estate. Are you, what, what is, what is, what does your business look like today? How is it structured? I mean, do you, do you have an assistant? Is it just you? It's me and I have an assistant, um, assistant who also is working with buyers and then I have another buyer's agent. So it's three of us right now. So there's three of you. Small team. You guys are cranking it out and I'm sure you guys have big goals for this, this year, I would assume, right? Yes, we do. Okay, so I'm curious when you when did you make the switch to EXP? I made the switch. It was the end of October. Okay. So recently. Okay, and so you worked for Remax before. Yes. Uh, talk to me about when you first heard about EXP. Well, I heard about EXP a couple of years ago. There was an agent I before Remax. I was at Keller Williams for a few years, and an agent that was there had gone to EXP and reached out to me. Um, I've not had interest in looking for another brokerage. When I decided to make this move in October, it was completely unexpected. Um, so, anyways, an agent in this area a couple of years reached out to me. Then I've had 
other agents that uh, not that that knew of me through clients or family reach out to me, and I just kept telling them, no, 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 you know, not looking to go anywhere. And it, right now in New in New Jersey, we have uh, I don't even think we're over 200 EXP agents. Yeah. So EXP is is very new here in New Jersey, but. Uh, an agent, another agent in Texas, I was on the phone with him. Um, he's part of a, another coaching group that I do for Facebook. And we were on the phone, and this is back in August. And he says to me, oh, I just changed brokerages. I went to eXp. And I said, oh, you know, I keep hearing about eXp. And he said to me, well, do you know uh, Jay Kinder and Mike Reese? I said, yeah, of course. And he said, they joined. And I said, what? And, you know, I had not realized that they had joined. And I said, listen, he's, and so he's trying to get me to, you know, join EXP. I said, listen, thank you. I'm going to be very upfront with you. I'm getting on the phone with Jay Kinder. I'm getting on the phone with him tonight or tomorrow. I immediately, you know, reached out to Jay. We got on the phone and I, I knew when when I found out that Mike and Jay were there, I said, there's gotta be something to this because I, through their coaching, learned so many things that agents in my marketplace are just starting to do today that I was doing back in 2012, 2013. And Mike and Jay, their coaching company, they saw, you know, they were they saw what was ahead in the in real estate. And they always were ahead of the game. So I said, there is something to EXP if they're on, if they, if they joined and got on the phone with Jay. And this was like around Labor Day, end of August that time. And it was not an easy decision at all, because like I said, I wasn't looking for it. Right. But and Jay always says, once you see it, you can't unsee it. And it was so true. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and that's interesting that you said, so you, you had known about eXp for a while and it had even been approached, but just you were never in a place um, where you'd given any, you'd given any, any thought to it other than, you know, just, you know, maybe at the surface level thought, but, you know, it's the, the interesting part of that though, is like you talk about Jay, right. And mm -hmm. somebody who uh, I've often thought about why, um, cause I mean, you know, he's just crushing it in, in revenue share. And the, the reason why is because he made all those, he made all those relationship deposits, um, over the last 10 years, um, to people like myself and people like you, um, when he was just, he was, you know, they were giving their heart and soul to the industry through coaching because they truly cared about, um, helping agents become, you know, the number one agents or number two or three agents in their market. And um, it just, it made so much sense for him to be able to move and then to be able to share that with people like us. Um, so, you know, I, I was like you, I, I thought, um, I heard, I, I had actually heard about them moving and then Jay sent me an email about it and um, I didn't think anything of it. I had been approached by other agents in my marketplace who didn't have credibility. Um, they didn't, they didn't have, uh, any influence like, you know, like what, and that's unfortunate that, mm -hmm. uh, but that's the reality of it sometimes, um, is that, you know, sometimes it just takes people with influence, uh, or at least not, maybe not influence in the world, but influence over you and your personal space. And obviously, you know, those guys have built influence and credibility through all of the, um, industry coaching that they've done. And so, but when I heard about it, you know, I was like, there's got to be something to this because these guys, they don't make rational or irrational yeah. decisions and they, they're not, you know, they do their due diligence when they're, yes. when they're vetting something. And so it's, it, I, I, I love that, you know, we share that. Um, I think that, you know, so you heard about it. How long did it actually take you to make the move once you heard about it? Uh, so end of August, about a month and a half. About a okay. month and a half. I mean, I was stalking Jay on Facebook and Mike on Facebook and watching every single video I could. And, you know, I was messaging Jay almost every day. And then he put me in touch with Matt Caruso here in New Jersey yeah. and met with him. You know, I really I didn't want to make a rash decision. I, you know, I knew I could go back, but nobody wants to, to do that and go through everything of making a change to a new brokerage and then having to to go back again. So I wanted to really be be sure. And it was 
probably one of the, I think it was a more of a difficult decision for me than it was when I decided to leave medical sales and go into real estate. This was definitely a harder decision. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so talk about why that is. Why was that? Well, there's, I guess, several reasons. You, you know, when you go from one brokerage to another, it's like you feel like you're starting all over again. You got to get everything from new business cards, signs, you know, change every website, social, everything. It's just a lot of work involved. And then there's the fact that, again, in New Jersey, EXP is new. And, you know, I had to get o to overcome that I wasn't going to be able to go out on a listing appointment and say, oh, I work with Remax and everybody knows who Remax is. I had to get the confidence to say that I'm going to have to go in there and say I'm with the XP and they're going to say, who? What's that? Uh, but learning through the coaching that I did, it is so not about the brokerage. It's not. It's about you as the agent. And that's what I learned, thankfully, through Kinder Reese and about branding yourself and EXP's model supports that. And, you know, I don't want to go out there and sell Remax or Century 21 or even EXP. I want to sell Melissa DeSantis. Yeah. And build that. So you, so when you, I, in the, the, one thing that you didn't mention that I know that, that we'll talk about here next is that, um, also, it's the relationships you build, right? You, right? you build relationships with the broker, with other agents. And so talk about that. What, what was it when you when you made the decision to move? What how did you approach approach the broker? And what was that conversation like? Uh, my broker, Remax. Yeah. Um, I reached out to well, it's a husband and wife. And I reached out to them and explained that you know, this isn't something that I was looking for, but that it was something that I had to do. And I ended up going out to dinner with the wife and we talked for several hours, several hours. And, you know, she said, are you sure this is, you know, what you want to do? Are you sure? Are you sure? And I, I, you know, and I knew, I just knew in my heart and my gut that I had to do it. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't easy because I loved my brokers. I loved my office. It wasn't like I was, you know, not happy and I was looking for something else. That's not the situation at all. It was just that it was presented to me and the opportunity was there. And I knew that if I didn't take this, this, this opportunity and take again, another leap of faith, it was something that I would regret forever. Sure. Yeah. And, and now looking back on it, you're probably, so glad you made that decision, right? Yes, I guess. I mean, it's only been a couple months and it's a transition period. So, you know, I'm still, to be completely honest, you know, anytime change is not easy, yeah. you know? So I'm still learning new things and I get frustrated with not knowing everything, you know, like knowing how to work this or work that. Uh, yeah. So that's been challenging, but I know it was the right decision. But one thing that remains the same, right, is you're still you're still working with buyers and sellers, right? You're still, oh yeah, that hasn't been an issue. You're still selling real estate, and at the end of the day, I mean, so am I, right? Yeah. You know, the the one of the, the the reasons that made it easy for us to move is because we knew that if we went back and asked any of our clients, did it matter what brokerage we were at? None of them would say yes. Uh, they would all say that the reason why we did business with you is because of you um, and your standards. And, 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 and so when we made the move or we made the transition, although we did think um, we'd have to explain EXP, we knew ultimately that with uh, everything that we had as laid as a foundational principle, um, that ultimately that that would overcome anything else uh, uh, or any conversation about, you know, who a EXP was or who ABC brokerage was. And I'm sure that you'll see that as you transition and the dust start, starts to settle uh, on your move too. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, I brought over all my listings. None of my sellers had an issue with it. Um, I, you know, explained to them, this is what, what I was doing. And I, I told them, look, you know, if you want to research EXP, go ahead and research them before you make a decision. 
Uh, most of them said, no, 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 we're going, we're going. I had a, one or two say, yeah, let me look into a little bit. But when they did, they were like, wow, you know, they, this is the fastest growing brokerage ever. Yeah. Um, they only had, you know, positive and good things to say about it. So let's talk about that wow for you. Like, so you made the decision to come over, but ultimately what was it about EXP that, that won you over? Uh, there's so, so many things. I guess first and foremost for me was seeing, like you said, those agents that have influence and the icon agents in the industry that were making the move and seeing that, you know, to me was big because, and and not only seeing it, but to be able to be in the same brokerage as some of these agents is to me like, you know, a dream come true. I never in my life thought, you know, even, you know, to be in the same brokerage as you, um, you know, you're in Ohio and we're in the same brokerage and I could reach out to you as I did and say, Hey, Mike, you know, I'm working on something. Would you help me? And you and everyone, honestly, everyone that I've reached out to at EXP has been over backwards to help me. And here I am collaborating with agents from, you know, yourself in Ohio to California, Texas. I mean, and the, you know, we're all working as one team. And to me, that's just something that I never thought I would see in real estate. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, the money I was paying for coaching every month, I get that for free now, you know, because I'm part of this EXP team. Isn't that great? Yeah, it's amazing. So, you know, you, you obviously you've come to um, the point in your business to where, you know, we, we make these we make these um, great strides and and usually it's like like I had said before it's it's usually when we get outside of our comfort zone and you had mentioned also that your move wasn't easy right and you yeah. so in a sense you got outside of your comfort zone again right and and so you're hoping really that um, that this is kind of the next step for you but I'm curious when you think about the next three, five, or ten years in real estate, what do you see um, from the brokerage perspective? You know, it's going to be interesting, especially, you know, with everything that I'm hearing these days with Keller Williams and artificial intelligence and all of that stuff. I mean, it's going to be interesting. I don't know. I think that it's going to be tough to be a broker and stay profitable. I don't have the really have the answers, but I just think that the brokers got to start giving, making it more about the agent um, and giving more to the agent to provide value to, to these agents if they're going to keep their agents. Yeah. Because, well, you know, nobody wants to pay all this money every month to, to promote something that in the end they don't have or they don't own. Right. Right. So and that, that, that actually is a good segue into my next question is like, what do you, what do you foresee happening to like the big box brokerages like Berkshire Hathaway or uh, Cobalt Banker or, you know, Century 21, um, the agents that offer, you know, lower splits yeah. don't have a lot of value? You know, I don't I got to be careful because I have a very good friend who's a realtor and manages a Berkshire Hathaway. So him and I butt heads a lot on, sure he gets a you know, by the way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we butt heads a lot uh, on our philosophy. You know, I tell him it's not about about the the brokerage; it's about the agent. And he will go back and forth with me all day long, saying you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Uh, you got to have the big, you know, the big name behind you. Wow. So I, I got to be careful because I don't want to upset him. <laughs> but I I don't know how they're going to stay in business, and I don't know why an agent would be willing to give away that much money, you know, of the, uh, of, that they're working for. And, you know, they'll come back and that with their side and say, oh, but we give you just, just listed postcards and we give you, you know, these beautiful signs and everything. But at the end of the day, exactly. What is that doing for you? Right. It's not doing anything for you. It's just kind of, it's like something I feel they give the agents to appease them and make them feel like, you know, that 40% or 50% that they're giving back to the brokerage is, 
you know, giving them something. Well, yeah. And you look back and, and if you're just, even if you're just an average agent, let's say you sold, you know, uh, I don't, let's say you sold 20 homes, right. And you look right. back at what you paid in. Um, and you, then you have to ask yourself, okay, let's say I paid in, you know, let's say I, I paid in $25,000 to the brokerage or 30, right. Right. Um, could you buy pretty little postcards yeah, exactly. listed or, or, <laughs> or, or nice looking uh, yard signs for that? And the, the, answer, the obvious answer is yes, right? And, and so what I think you're saying is that more and more people will start to catch on to this. Um, and you and I both know that the industry will at some point start to get younger, right? If we know yes. that the average, the average realtor, uh, I think, is, is like a 57-year-old female. Um, and, and we know that, um, you know that there's a new huge workforce uh, moving in with the millennials, uh, mm -hmm. and you know they will start to to realize and or recognize the opportunities in our industry, and and we also know that millennials are very transient, right? They don't need brick and mortar. They don't need right. it. Uh, they right. can work at Starbucks. They can work, you know, um, they can work anywhere. They can work at home, right? And you know, as long as they can get their questions answered, which you and I both know they can, going into EXP world, right? Uh, they can and they can go there from anywhere. It's you know how do you how do you convince those folks um, to, you know, come into a into a, an office space and 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 pay for that? Not only come into it and use it, but also right. pay for it as part of their commission split. I just right. don't, I don't, and that's where I think the disconnect will be in the future is when the millennials when when the millennials truly start to move into the real estate space, and they will, and they they are already starting to, is they will they will see that there's no value in paying out 40 or 50% of my commission, you know, for just listed cards uh, or yard signs uh, and then paying for brick and mortar that I never use. Right. I mean, with, with you saying that, yes, I agree for me. Uh, that was one concern about EXP. As I said, it's virtual, you know, I can't work from home, you know, because my, my husband works nights and my children are young and I got the dog and you know, you're interrupted with, you know, the, someone coming to clean the house or the, whatever it is. Right. And I just needed an office space. So that was something that I was, you know, I guess said no to in the beginning to EXP. But once I explored it and realized, okay, I could still have an office, you know, and I'll, I'll pay for it, yeah. which I'm doing now outside of my house. But it, when I did all the numbers, it was still less money that I would spend per year than I was paying to have my office at Remax. Yeah. You know, I was spending, you know, well over a thousand dollars a month to have an office. And it was, a, you know, uh, and when I say an office, I'm talking about, you know, a, I don't even know what was it a uh, nine by 12 room or something, you know, yeah. a small, a small room within the office. <laughs> so I, for me right now, I need to, be outside of the house working. And I, I do think though, that's a misconception about EXP is that people say, oh, what, you gotta stay home and work in your pajamas every day? You know, no, there are options. And I, you know, they talk about the Regis space. I'm not doing the Regis space. You know, I just went out and got my own office space within yeah. a building. Right, but with all the extra money you're making, it's like, you're, it's like it, who, you're still saving money, right? I'm still saving money. In the end, yes. So, what are you doing right now in your business that's really working well for you? Oh, what am I doing that's really working well for me? <laughs> Good question. You know, I feel this time of year is always a little bit of a challenge because you come off of, you know, the previous year. And last year for me was my best year yet in real estate. Congratulations. So, thank you. So I think, and every year I get like this, oh my God, oh my God, how am I going to do what I did last year? You know, and I think as I'm speaking to other realtors and, you know, a lot of us feel that way, you know, because you, you know, you're busy all year and then this time of year it tends to slow down a little bit and we're, we get nervous. So I've been, you know, the past since the holidays, just kind of taking a deep breath trying to learn all the EXP systems, um, you know, everything that they give you, you know, I'm digging into KV Core, um, trying to figure out Facebook ads and th things like that. So trying to just do things a little bit differently 
Um, but for me, um, I've always focused on my past clients. Okay. And I, I feel you, you know, you always have to have a couple of lead sources, but your past clients are your, you know, they're your most loyal, loyal fans, if you will. Sure. And that's where I tend to focus my business. We did a client appreciation party in the end of November and had about uh, 150 past clients attend. Wow. And that what was that great. Like? I'm sorry. What did that event look like? So it was at the American Hotel, which is like a hotel in downtown Freehold. And it was on a Friday evening. We had, it was, it was the week after Thanksgiving. We had a DJ, we had, it was, you know, a, a dinner, um, bar, a bar. We had a DJ, we had um, Santa came and Mrs. Claus came for the kids. Nice. And then we had a, uh, a balloon artist and someone that did all the kids hair and their makeup. And then we had face painting, the kids dance, the adults drank. We had a raffle for prizes and it was, it was a great time. That's awesome. Did you time. put all that together by yourself? Myself and the two girl, the two girls, Corey and Randy, who work with me, we wow, put it that's together. Impressive. And you had 150. Yeah. For that. yeah. That's incredible. And so, I mean, the three of you must've been just like running around with chickens with your head cut off. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was it was a lot of work, and it, and putting it together right when I made the switch to EXP was was not easy either. Yeah, but it's great because it's you know as much as you want to keep in touch with your past clients, it's hard to always have the time to uh, you know to get together or get on the phone with them. So I was able to spend time with with so many past clients. It was great. Was that your first one, or had you done had you? Done I had done another one in 2016. Okay. And everybody kept saying, when are you doing the next one? When are you doing the next one? So, you know, that we decided, I, I'm not committing to it every year because it is a lot of work. Yeah. But, you know, every two or three years, definitely. Every two or three years? Yeah. And, and so I, I would assume you probably see referrals directly rated, related to that event, right? I would say that last year, I would say 70 to 80% of my business was referrals. Wow, that is so good. And you know what that means? That means you do a really good job for your clients, right? Because if if they, if 70%, 70, 80% of your business is coming from referrals, then people uh, must just be, you must have raving fans, right? And so how do you create that raving fan experience with all of your clients? Well, for me, it's, you know, it's a, it's, a, it, it, I have a hard time being, you know, not because I have a hard time not becoming friends with my clients. You know, when I work with people, um, you get to, you know, this business is very emotional, uh, emotional draining. We become like therapists uh, and it's hard not to get close to them. So I, they just become, I, I mean, I have clients from seven, eight years ago that are still dear friends of mine and we keep in touch. And I would say that a lot of them, you know, I send out, you know, I send out my family uh, holiday cards to them because yeah. they just become true friends. And those are the people that you want to be with, that you enjoy working with and it doesn't feel like work. Yeah. Is it getting harder and harder to keep up with all the people? Um, <laughs> I guess. Is it? I guess as time goes by, I guess so. Yeah. What are you gonna do yeah. when you start selling like three, four, or five hundred homes a year? How are you oh, up with everyone? I'll love that problem, Mike. I'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love I, that problem. I think you're welcome. artificial intelligence, right? Exactly. <laughs> you get to clone yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you're well on your way to getting there. And um, certainly, um, you know, I've enjoyed being able to spend a few minutes here with you today. Um, I'm just excited you made the transition and I'm, I'm really rooting for you. Um, I'm, I, I do have a question for you, though, and I, I like to ask everyone this because we, we do get a lot of people that listen to the show and that watch the show. So I'm curious um, your spin on this. What, what do you say to um, to agents who are considering EXP? 
Um, either they're just get they're trying to gather information or they're truly interested in making a move to a different brokerage. What do you say to those folks? I say take the time and do your research and understand it. In the beginning, when other agents reached out to me, I I didn't I didn't listen or I didn't want to listen and I didn't understand it. I didn't know what, know what it was. So I think you really got to do your research and take the time to to investigate and understand it. And I also say, look at the agents who joined worldwide. I mean, if that doesn't speak volume, I don't know what else does. Um, you have these mega icon agents around the world that have joined. Uh, why have they joined? You know, ask yourself that, ask them that. Ask them what made you join because it's just a, you know, it's something that I never thought we'd see in this, in this industry, yep. the opportunity that EXP has provided. It, it is one of the most exciting times I can remember uh, to be in real estate. It has truly reinvigorated my career. I'm, I'm excited to get out of bed every day. I'm excited for what the future holds at this company. And uh, I'm excited to have had the opportunity to talk to you today. I'm certainly a big fan. And uh, I wish you the best. Thank you so much for taking the sure. time out of your day to join me. And I hope that um, that there's someone out there that connects with your story. How can people get in touch with you if they have questions about EXP or just questions about growing their real estate business? Sure. Uh, call, text me 732-757-2522 or email me mdesantis, real estate at gmail.com. All right, Mrs. Melissa mm -hmm. DeSantis, I have uh, I've had a blast. And listen, if you ever need anything, um, certainly feel free to reach out to me. I look forward uh, to connecting with you uh, at our event in uh, Orlando. I believe it is in June. Uh, yes. And then again at the um, uh, EXP Con event in Vegas. Did you go to the event in October? That that is right when you were transitioning over. So yeah, that was right. Yeah, I yeah I think that was like around the week I was joining. Okay. Yeah. No. So it was, I, and Matt was like, come on, come on. You got to go. You got to go. I said, look, look, look. Yeah. Uh, it's too much going on. One thing at a time next year, next year, next year, next year. Yes. Well, listen, Melissa, thank you so much. And, and thank uh, you, Mike, it was a pleasure with you down the road. Okay. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.